there's nothing like playing Tetris on the original Game Boy and right now I'm doing quite good. I'm actually going to reach a new high score at this rate, but the screen is not all there. You know, it's all right, but it's so outdated at this point. If only there was something better we can do or perhaps play it on a TV. Here I have a kit for the original Game Boy, not just any kit. This is actually the V5 Rips kit and it's the TV version, which should allow your Game Boy to play on the TV. It also comes with a pre-cut shell, which is awesome. So let's take a proper look at the kit itself. So here is the board itself that replaces pretty much half of the Game Boy and somehow the silk screen's upside down. Also coming with this kit is a pre-cut shell. Now this was optional, but I did decide to go for a pre-cut shell to save some time. It comes with the AV out cable that connects your Game Boy to the TV. The screen replacement itself with the board that makes all the magic happen. Mine came pre-connected and a bracket to align the screen itself. As for the installation, I'm going to start with the shell. If you don't have a pre-cut shell, I'll tell you the modifications that are required to the shell. As you can see, there is two pillars that have been cut. There's also a section up in the top right that's also been cut. For some reason, the instructions say to remove this little tab, but it's still present and I'll keep it until it's necessary. On the other side, the contrast wheel opening has been increased slightly, mainly just on this left hand side. Now, unfortunately, for the price I paid, for some reason, the kit only comes with a plastic lens and it's not that good. So let's get rid of that because I've also bought a separate glass screen lens which should give it a better finish and touch than the plastic screen cover because i'm starting with the shell i'm going to actually grab the glass screen protector and remove the inner 3m adhesive with that removed i'm then going to reveal the sticky adhesive layer then making sure it's completely dust free i'm going to stick it down into the shell already with that stuck down if i flip this around i can grab the bracket and i want to insert it as you can see there's a little notch cut out for the d-pad so you know which direction it fits in it should go over all four pillar holes then grabbing the new ips screen and removing the protective cover from this i'm going to be quick about this and place it down into the game boy because i don't want any dust in there now my board is already attached to the screen, if not you want to attach it to the screen. Because it's already attached, as you can see it can move because there's nothing really holding it down, so I'm going to use some 3M adhesive and stick it on the back of this board to stick it to the screen itself. So chucking on the 3M adhesive and revealing the 3M adhesive itself. Then placing the board over and just stick it down, roughly anywhere will do. With that all prepped, I can now put in the new buttons and conductive pads. Now in previous kits, the speaker actually comes attached, but for some reason mine did not, nor was one provided. I don't know what that was about, perhaps I misordered, but I've got some random bits of wire here, I don't know where it's come from, but let's prep this up so we can use it for the speaker. First I'm going to cut it into two, because we don't need it that long, and then I'm going to cut off the old ends in case it's oxidised anyway, or there's any issues with it. With the old ends cut off, I'm now going to need to prep the new ends to be soldered down, so I'm going to use my same cutters and just remove the plastic shielding. Then. I'm going to tin the tips, which is just soldering the tips. I'm going to do this to both sides, to both wires. Then get in a replacement speaker. This is actually from an original Game Boy. This isn't brand new, but it does work. I'm going to attach my new speaker wires to both pads of the speaker. I'm now going to put it into the shell ready. Moving over to the board itself, there is two points here. This one is the ground and this one is the AV out. I'm going to tend these in preparation for inserting my new wires. I have actually marked one of my wires with a black marker, although I'd recommend just using two different colors if you have them available. With the pads tinned, I'm now going to connect my ground wire with the marked black stripe to the ground pad and then the complete solid red wire to the AV pad. With those attached, I'm now going to get the RIPS V5 board and I'm actually going to feed the speaker wires through the speaker pad completely and then place the board into the shell, making sure those speaker wires are still through the pads. With that board in place, I can now attach the speaker wires to the speaker pads just by applying my solder line with a bit of solder. If you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. 
with the speaker attached, we can now connect the new IPS kit screen to the RIPS V5 board by just pushing it in and folding down the locking mechanism. And that's pretty much all we need to do for the front half of the Game Boy. So let's move over to the rear half. Now my rear half is actually something I fixed before and it doesn't actually have a front half. And if you want to see the video of me repairing this, you can watch that in the top right. Luckily, there's only two screws I need to remove. So let's remove those now. With the screws removed, I can remove all three boards from the rear half of the shell. Grabbing the new shell, I can simply put the new boards in, nothing crazy about this, and then put all of the Phillips screws to hold the boards down. Not forgetting to do the power switch first before you screw it all down. Something I may or may not have forgot is to put the screws in to the front half. There's quite a few of them, so let me just do this now for you to speed things up. With those all screwed in, we can now get both halves of the shell, and this is where we need to connect up the TV out portion of this IPS kit. So here is my wires. I am actually going to cut these to be slightly shorter, and all they need to do is attach to the external connector here. The first wire, which is the ground, marked with my black pen, needs to go to any ground point on the board. I'm just going to use the external connector's ground pin, like so. The AV out wire needs to go to the middle pin on the furthest left row, making sure not to short on any of the other pins. You may need to trim it so that it doesn't. So with that attached, as you can see, I left a little bit of leeway so I can play around with the two halves of the shell. I'm going to insert the brand new cable into the connector and then flip over the screen half of the Game Boy and insert this new cable in. It requires quite a bit of force, but once it's in there, it won't be coming out. Then I can sandwich the two things together with that sandwiched together, we could put all of the tribing screws in the back of the shell into the Game Boy. Not forgetting the screws underneath the battery cover. I like to reuse the original serial stickers onto my new builds. So applying some liquid to this serial sticker, then getting just underneath it and then removing it with a pair of tweezers. Now I could stick this onto my new shell and then we can keep track of this Game Boy Perhaps the most satisfying part of this build is removing the protective cover on the glass screen lens. Look at that. And there we have it. That is the RIPS V5 installed into the original Game Boy. Now there is some things we need to discuss about this kit, because as you can see on the left hand side, this is the V4 kit, which is the previous version. As you can see, unfortunately, the new kit is slightly smaller and it is not too much smaller, about 20%. So on the V4 kit, it's about five centimeters wide whereas on the V5 kit, it is about 4.5 centimeters wide. Not only that, but the quality of the screen seems to be slightly worse on the V5 kit. However, the new V5 kit does offer the ability to play your Game Boy out of the external connector onto a TV screen. All you have to do is plug in the provided cable and the audio jack to get audio through to the screen. Then by holding down the contrast wheel, it pops up the on-screen menu. You just want to go to the TV section and switch it to on. As soon as you do, the screen will go blank and it will appear on your TV. Then to switch back, just hold down the contrast menu again and go back to off. This kit also comes with many predefined color modes just by simply pressing down the contrast wheel. I'll flip through all of them now. Most of them look quite the same at the start, but there's quite a few. Like most kits nowadays, it also comes with a brightness control going all the way down to be dim and then all the way up to be bright although it's not as good as the V4 kit. The V4 kit also offers position changes for the screen of it's slightly out and a pixel grid effect, which unfortunately the V5 kit does not offer. As you can see, it's completely missing from the menu. Both of them still retain the color adjustment to make your own custom color profile. So to summarize completely, although that the IPS screen itself is slightly worse off compared to the previous V4 kit, if you want to play your Game Boy on a TV screen, this would be the kit for you, and that is the trade-off. I didn't notice any particular issues on the TV itself. The picture quality was acceptable. I don't really have any other kits to compare it to right now. Perhaps that's something I could do at a later date. But if you don't plan to use the TV out kit, then 100% get the V4 OSD version of the RIPS kit. Do not get the V5 because it is significantly worse in the handheld mode. 
Let me know your thoughts down below of this kit in the comment section.